Rotary opens opportunities in several respects. And as we've learned this year, Rotary has opened opportunities for us to learn to do Rotary when we can't do it in person. That's one of the big ones. One of the other Rotary opportunities this year is a district strategy that focuses on how can we expand Rotary clubs in District 7750. And I'll explain why that's important. First, with notable exceptions, I'm talking about a half dozen clubs out of 50. With notable exceptions, Rotary clubs in our district have not meaningfully grown in the past decade. Rotary clubs in our district have not meaningfully grown, meaning no more than a 10% entire growth rate over 10 years. So what's that about? Well, there's a natural inclination to think our club is just the right size. There is a size mindset that seems to be built in every club. I've traveled this entire district. I've heard no, more than once from clubs that our club is just the right size. Now, somehow just the right size is some number between 14 and 220, but pretty much every club is wherever that is. So what I've determined is that this is such a mindset that clubs have simply become satisfied to almost maintain their current size. What I mean is that clubs will work almost hard enough at membership to maintain or slightly grow. It's really unusual, like I said, about a half a dozen good examples for clubs that have said, we can be bigger and they've gotten bigger, literally one or two members a year and nothing flashy, but over extended periods of time. So here's the thing. If most clubs don't want to grow and your club may be in that category, others will naturally shrink. If successful clubs don't want to grow and failing clubs shrink, it's not hard to do the math. We'll see steadily declining rotary presence in this half of our state for years to come as we have over the past decade. It'll keep going. Now, here's something else that may be new information to you. The populations and the demographics of Rotary have shifted from where our existing clubs are. Our existing clubs are built around Rotary Club Model A. And Rotary Club Model A sounds like we meet in person, we meet typically at lunch, we meet over a meal and we meet in the city center. That's pretty much Rotary Club Model A that's been good for 120 years. We meet in person, we meet over a meal, we meet usually at lunch. There are some, of course, morning and evening clubs, but not a lot. And we do that in the city center. Well, here's the problem with that. That population has migrated out of that city center into other places. Also, the demographic of people who can get away from work for typically an hour and a half to two hours in the middle of a day, that demographic has shrunk. In fact, the restaurant business has seen that in the pre-COVID world. The restaurant business over the past five years or so has seen a 40% decline in lunch business, simply because in the current anytime, anywhere, 24-7 online environment of work, People simply feel like they can't leave the building. So you've got a group of people that are elsewhere and you've got a group of people that can't come for lunch. That's significantly reduced. That's why we have a less than 1% market penetration in any of our areas where we have clubs. So I believe we need to find a way to establish new clubs that are meeting in different places, meaning outside the city center, meaning, meaning five to 10 miles from where the current club meets and at different times of day. The, the dominant model for new clubs has been after hours, happy hour. And this is a five or 5.30 sort of meeting. It is a get it in, get it done, get on the road. And granted, some of those clubs meet at a place where food and beverage is served and Several members will stick around after the meeting to enjoy each other and maybe a burger and a beer, but that's not part of the Rotary meeting. Furthermore, what you find is that people don't associate that cost with part of the cost of being in Rotary. That burger and beer goes on the bar bill side of the household budget, not into the Rotary side of the household budget. So they go ahead and spend the money on a meal, 
but they don't as associate that cost with Rotary, meaning that you reduce the sticker price. In most Rotary clubs, the meals are two thirds of the annual cost. So you slash literally 60% discount off of the current annual sticker price of Rotary Club Model A by meeting in different places and at different times and not around a meal. I believe in my lifetime, certainly many of yours, that the dominant Rotary Club meeting model, B or C, whatever that is, will probably not include a meal. So here's kind of an illustration of that. I want you to enjoy this short little video and understand that it is available to you for uh, starting this conversation with your Rotary Board. As Rotary, we often ask ourselves, how do we grow personally, professionally, and organizationally? The answer is simple. To grow Rotary, we need more Rotary Clubs. Let's use Anytown as an example. Anytown is a city of 100,000 people and home to one proud Rotary Club. But there are hundreds of other people of action, just like us, who are uniquely qualified to become Rotary members. They share the same drive and represent the values and fundamentals of a Rotary member. So why aren't they members? Well, the current club meets on Monday. There are leaders in any town who can't meet on a Monday. By excluding this segment, the potential members in any town has shrunk. Now consider, what if the meeting is at noon on Monday? There are people who can meet on Monday, but can't meet at noon. So now we have a smaller audience for Rotary in any town. Of the remaining group, some aren't interested in a club with a sit-down lunch and speakers. They are passionate about service, but aren't interested in a traditional club experience. And that is okay. The Rotary Club of Anytown isn't doing anything wrong. It just doesn't appeal to particular segments of the community. And if we're going to thrive for years to come, we must adapt and embrace change. In any town, we have an opportunity to expand because potential members are everywhere. More than half of the eligible people are prospective Rotary members, waiting to make a bigger impact in their community. But what Rotary Club exists for them? If any town creates new clubs at new times and new places, the hidden potential for Rotary will be revealed. As people of action, we must broaden our reach and provide opportunities to all leaders in the community. Together, all of us can grow Rotary. So the concept that we're promoting within District 7750 is the idea of what's called a satellite club. A satellite club is not a newly formed chartered Rotary Club, but rather an extension of your own club. And this is easier for a variety of reasons. The big one is you don't have to come up with 20 people in order to launch one. And the second one is that that satellite club does not have to come up with its own infrastructure, its own overhead, its own secretary, treasurer, bank account, all that stuff, because those satellite members are technically members of your club. It's just a subset of your club that meets at a different time and place, could be a workplace meeting location, maybe at the workplace of a large employer, such as a, such as a healthcare facility. I know, for example, that uh, we don't attract people from the Clemson campus to either our Clemson Sunrise Club or our Clemson Noon Club. The big reason for that, if they leave their parking place at noon to go to a Rotary meeting, they can't park on the campus when they come back. It's just a non-starter. So good example of a place that we could have a workplace meeting. A big hospital system that's got thousands of employees. Shift change at say 4.30 in the afternoon would be a perfect time to have a Rotary meeting on site. And of course, could include people from outside that organization. Alternate demographics, Rotary Club, if, if your Rotary Club is senior, shall we say, and that has been maybe a pushback of young professionals or younger members, 40-somethings, 30-somethings uh, uh, joining, perhaps you could have a satellite club that was built around that younger demographic doing the kinds of things that those younger folks want to do. It's not unusual for a satellite club, for example, to meet once a month 
as an ordinary meeting with a program, maybe not a meal. And then the second meeting of the month is actually a service project, which could be planned during the regular meeting. We also are seeing cause-based clubs. These are clubs built around, say, veterans, or uh, we have one satellite club that's starting up in our district that is cause-based, focused on education, simply focused on that one human need, uh, which is widespread in South Carolina, as we all, all know, but they're focused on just that. Now, it's not that they won't pay attention to the six other areas of service, but they'll be mainly focused on education cause based uh, strategies. So those are some ideas on how a satellite club could be organized meets at a different time meets at a different place, hopefully five to 10 miles from the city center. Or meets at a uh, large employer workplace or has some alternate more specific focus than broad based rotary model a where we kind of look at all kinds of community needs. So. I wanted to illustrate with you uh, what I've learned about where the people are, which is not necessarily where our Rotary Clubs are. The uh, website is growrotary.org. No dots, no dashes, growrotary, all one word, dot org. And you log into this with your My Rotary member login. There we go. We are in growrotary.org. And this is a demographic map of our part of South Carolina, our district. And I'll explain quickly, you can see the shape of it here. The darker areas are the heavily populated areas of our district. These are not counties, these are not municipalities. These are actually slices of land between roads and rivers. So you'll notice each one of these, as I zoom in, each one of these is bounded by streets, highways, or rivers. And you'll notice they're uh, highly uh, granularized. So let's take a look a little closer. And what we recognize is, I'll just give you some quick examples. You can browse this yourself, but taking a look now, these are the Rotary Clubs. I'm gonna click this uh, little drop down over here, and I'm going to turn on, here's where the members live. And what you'll notice folks, this was astonishing to me how incredibly small our coverage is around any given Rotary Club. It's no more than 10 to 15 miles. In other words, we have very few Rotary members who live or work more than 10 or 15 miles from where the club meets. That's the, the evolved disqualifying defect of our city center meeting model. So you'll notice York here, for example, York sits in inside a relatively a uh, small set of these uh, micro demographics. And each of these has a population of several thousand. But all around York are a whole bunch of these demographic segments where we don't have any Rotarians, like zero. You'll notice that, of course, along the state line here where we have our some, some of our bedroom communities that uh, feed into Charlotte. You'll notice also on our southeastern border, we have exactly the same thing on the uh, around the lake area and the perimeter of, uh, of, of Columbia and the District 7770 border. And you'll notice the same thing. The Anderson Club, for example, realized from looking at this that, let me go find it here. There we are. That in and around Anderson, there are some pockets of membership opportunity where we have no members whatsoever. We were looking at this on behalf of the Rock Hill Club and Rock Hill realized that while they meet in the city center, just like most of our clubs and their members are clustered around that area, we've got a huge um, residential commercial corridor out here east of town, some distance where we have literally one Rotarian in all of this territory of a population of almost 6,000 people only one Rotarian. So the satellite club conversation shifted in Rock Hill to let's put a satellite club out there meeting again after hours, a different time and place than where our club meets. So it's just a, it's just a cons considerably different mindset than, you know, let's keep doing Rotary Model A, which of course has worked for a long time, but it now has significant limitations that we've learned. 
So I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have about that uh, or entertain any conversation. I realize that a lot of this is not new to several of you and that several of you on the call have been exploring and uh, some actually committed to satellite club development. But we do have time for a couple of questions. Okay, thank you, Terry. And we are coming up on the hour. I promised uh, my presidents that we'll hold these to an hour to fit their schedules. But uh, uh, any questions for Terry? Uh, that you'd like to share with the group or we can have it offline in a couple minutes or you can reach out to Terry separately. 